Hello there, I'm John and welcome to a special Arty Class webinar hosted by Shopkey Party, the online platform helping everyone to be inspired, learn new art skills and have fun. Today we're zooming to the UK where we'll be painting a highland stream with renowned watercolour artist David Bellamy. Being live is the best way to learn as you can ask questions directly to the artist as you paint along. If you're watching a recording of this event, sorry you missed it, but you can find a full list of materials and reference photos on the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's hit the travelometer to the left of me and we'll go and see David. So David paints primarily in watercolour and much of his work results from expeditions into the remote regions. He's written 20 books, illustrated with paintings and sketches. He's also produced numerous DVDs and even presented his own series on television. So we're really in for a treat. Hello, David. Hello, John. Hello, everybody. I hope you can uh, see me OK. We can, we can. It's looking very spooky. This is this is a prime example of light and, and shade, light and shade. <laughs> um, so uh, how, how are you doing? It's been a while since we hosted. Can you believe this is our fifth show together? Is it really? Good it heavens. Is. I know. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah, we're absolutely uh, on the ball here. Yeah, that's 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 great. Uh, yeah. I'm fine. Thanks. And Good. it's a beautiful day here. Yeah. And you're it's looking and I, I commented on the fact it looks looks as though you've had a haircut recently. So it's looking uh, oh, yes. looking yes. mighty dashing there, David. <laughs> That's good oh, to say. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I'll let you get ready while I finish my short introduction. So unlike our free 45 minute arty class webinars, these special arty webinars guarantee you a place and are more exclusive since we don't live stream. Some of you will have paid to join in live today, but most of you will be our shopkeep arty patrons. When you become a patron, you get access to all of these special classes throughout the month for free. And what's more, becoming a patron starts at the same price as it costs to attend this one show and it can help you save money when you join our longer workshop webinars or want access to the recordings. Um, you can cancel at any time, so if you do enjoy our classes, head over to shopkeeparty.com where you can find out more about our monthly membership. These one-hour classes are designed to give you a, a boost of creative inspiration from leading artists around the world, an amazing opportunity to join them live and experience different multicultural techniques and influences. Around halfway, we'll take a pause and I'll ask David about his upcoming two to three hour full workshop webinar, uh, which will be expanding on what we cover today. So. Uh, without further ado, let's get back to David and we will make a start. Thank you, John. That's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, so, right, please ask any questions as I go along. The uh, painting I'm going to do today is uh, a mountain stream with a little cascade in the foreground here. This is the original sketch done with a, I think it must have been a 5B pencil quite some time ago. And uh, I'm going to do all this wet into wet. So because we haven't got a great deal of time, I'm going to charge straight in. I've started uh, mixing some um, cobalt blue and I've got some a moon glow here. Moon glow is uh, uh, a lovely color. It's a plum colored um, uh, paint. And um, these are Daniel Smith uh, fine watercolors. Uh, so I hope you're reasonably familiar with them. So we'll go ahead now. I'm working on Saunders Waterford uh, 140 pounds rough paper. Uh, rough because I want to get a little bit of texture in uh, into the painting. So this is all going to be um, wet in wet in the background. And as you can see, I've changed the, uh, the format of the composition from a portrait format to a um, a landscape one uh, oh. so uh, I've expanded it just a little bit mainly away to the the right I got this I've accentuated this tree here that's um, uh, quite small on the sketch so we'll start with with some uh, just some water I'm using a, a 
a squirrel mop brush. Now, Cecilia has asked a question. She says, do you ever use watercolour pencils or markers or sticks, David? I use watercolour pencils, but mainly for sketching. Uh, although sometimes, very occasionally, I, I've used them in, in a painting itself. But uh, I, I do like using them. They're, they're superb sketching um, the tools. And um, if you, I find that if I want to paint in the rain, uh, I can drop the watercolour on, working with dark watercolour pencils, like a black and an indigo, and get the I image that way, whilst the water is, well, it's not exactly drying, it's raining, of course, but um, I get um, I get what I want. I get, I get a nice moody scene. So um, that's how I, I generally work. Now, I'm putting in on some uh, Naples yellow to start with. Now, Lynn's actually said that she's got her yellow oxide that you recommended. Um, if you can tell her when to use it. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be using a bit of yellow oxide today. <laughs> OK. Um, well, I, I, either that or, or yellow ochre. But yes, you can use uh, transparent yellow oxide. It's, um, it's a lovely colour. And a, a little bit more of the, uh, of the Naples yellow going in. And uh, just a touch of cadmium red as well in, in there. Not much, but just, just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do, I've got a touch of uh, cobalt blue in with the, the moon glow. And this is the moon glow going in now. Swirling it round in this way. And what I want to do is to create some mist at the bottom of the um, of the, the, this this area here. So we'll we'll have a, a bit of bit more color going through there. And I love this effect where you've got it all wet, and you you put some dark color on the top there, and letting it flow down, and it's granulating beautifully because. Uh, uh, the moon glow is a is a, a really good color for granulating, and also, of course, I'm I'm using uh, rough paper, which helps helps if you want to create granulations. So um, watch out for that. So I'm now going to use a, a smaller brush. This is a this is a number six. No. Now yes. your board, your board is at an angle, isn't it? How, what, what sort of degree would you say incline you've got? Uh, I've got a, a probably a <laughs> twenty degree incline. I should About think. twenty degrees. There we go, Victoria. Yeah. If I've got a real storm going, then I might, I might have it really high, <laughs> and so it comes down with a, with a real vengeance. Yeah. Um, Susie's just... asked, have you ever used granulation medium? Yes, I have. It's. Um... The Winsor Newton granulation medium is is uh, is is very useful, and uh, especially I used to use it especially when I before I started using the Daniel Smith colours uh, because so many of the Daniel Smith colours really granulate so strongly you don't need it quite so much, but if you do use it then it, it really will make it granulate um, uh, very very strongly if you use one of the Daniel Smith granulating colours. Yeah, it, it's it's a, a very good uh, a, 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 a very good device to use. So now what I'm doing, I'm uh, whilst I'm waffling away here, but my uh, squirrel mop uh, lost a few of its hairs there. Uh, it um, it is the problem with squirrel mops, but uh, I try not to let it bug me. I'm getting rid of them one by one. These loose hairs. Uh, and what I want to do now is I'm watching the sheen on it. I'm just looking across here to see how wet it is. It's still a bit too damp to actually start the wetting wet. I want to put the mountains in wet into wet. And so now I'm going to um, use some cobalt blue and again with the moon glow, but I, I don't need too much water on the brush 
Um, you don't need any water on the brush. You really want the brush to be quite, quite thirsty when you do the uh, wet into wet. Now, Trina's asked, what, what colour, that yellow, that sort of gold colour in the middle, what, what is that? That is Naples yellow. Ah, Naples yellow, brilliant, thanks. And there's a touch of, um, of cadmium red in there as well. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm putting the, uh, this wet into wet, and as I suspected, it's still very, very much uh, too wet. It's sort of going out. And what I want to do is create a shape in there, the shape of the crag coming down. But I can't do that at the moment because it's it's still too wet. So okay. whilst I'm doing that, I'll I'll work on the water a little bit. Well, we've got a we've got a question from Rebecca who says, huge fan of yours, David. What sort of palette do you use to mix with, and does it stay wet between uses? Uh, no, it doesn't stay wet between uses. It's um, uh, it's left open. I've got uh, about a dozen palettes, I suppose. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> wow. So many of them are different. This is my favourite palette, uh, a China palette. It's a nice heavy one, very good for mixing wash. As you can see, that's the uh, uh, the moon glow in there. And uh, I've got a nice uh, pool of colour in there. You can mix really deep pools of colours with, with this one. Um, this is... Um, this isn't really a, a palette. This 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 was given to me by a student who picked it up in in a supermarket. It's just, uh, it, just off camera. It's just off camera at the moment. Oh, though. sorry. Yeah, there we go. It it um it had plants or something in it, or I, I don't know what it had in it, but it was it's an excellent. You can pick these things up in supermarkets, and these are really good because they slot in quite in, into a very confined space beside your main palette. And you can use them for creating really big washes. And this would be the main palette with all the, the, the colours down the side there. And there's room to, to mix there as well. But I, I like to mix with the, uh, the China one in, in the main. So those are the palettes I use. Brilliant. Thank you. Right. Uh, I, it's not quite ready yet. What I'm going to do is... Um, I've got just a little bit of color on this, some of uh, the cobalt blue. And what I'm going to do is, is just put it across there like that in a sort of dry brush way. This is for the water and a little bit more up there. There's a, a small fall up there and a larger one here. So I'll put in some color here, a little bit of color. And this is just catching the side. I don't want to have a too harsh uh, <coughs> a, a, a sort of join between the, the water and the, the rock there. I want, um, I want to create a little bit of shadow in there. And then what I do is lose the edge a little bit just with a damp brush. So it looks a bit strange at the moment, but you'll see what I mean when I, I get to that point. Right, let's let's give the, um, the the peak another go, see what it's like. This is this is what you do when you're not sure whether it's it's ready. You can you can put the um, you can either put your little blob in there, it's still a bit um, too wet, or you can put it on the side there, where perhaps it doesn't matter so much. So we'll we'll leave it for just a moment. Look, we can't leave it too long now. The trouble is, you've got to keep watching this, otherwise, it's gone. And what you have to do if it if it does go is to re-wet it, dry the paper, and then re-wet it. And I guess I guess this really does come with practice <laughs> to know it the right does dampness. Take, does take a lot of practice. Yeah. And a lot of blobs. <laughs> <laughs> so right, let's um, let's see. I'll have another go in a moment. So I'm just putting a touch of cadmium red in into it at this moment. We'll just see. Yeah, it's it's getting a little better now. So we'll take it down there. It's still still a bit too damp in a way.
as you can see, it, it's furring out just a little bit too much. So this is coming down out of the cloud. And this is the way if you want mountains in clouds, then this wet in wet technique is so useful. So we'll, we'll take it over there, over this. And there's a little pinnacle going in there. Sorry, I'll, I'll... sorry, David, your, your head's just slightly in the way of the camera when you're doing those little... Di I know you need to also look what you're doing. <laughs> well, occasionally, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's the, it's the chicken and egg scenario. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so uh, there we are. And what I, what I like to do as well is to get a damp brush and actually pull out a little bit of colour in places not too much, as so though there's there's boilerplate slabs up there on on that crag that are catching the light. So uh, right, we'll um, it's coming along slowly, but it, it's it's a bit too slow in in, in a in a sense. So I must try and make uh, make up a bit of. I'm using one of Rosemary and Co's red dot brushes. These are excellent brushes. If uh, it's, it's not a sable, but it's uh, it's totally synthetic. Uh, these are not ones I normally use, but uh, she sent me these recently. And um, I just thought I'd show them because they really are good. If you don't want to spend too much money and still get an absolutely superb brush, these are, are great. This is a, a number nine. And what I'm doing is just putting a little bit of, um, of color at the bottom there. Bottom of this, this misty effect coming through. And I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sort of go around the edges of the trees because the trees are gonna be darker. So we want to keep that um, fairly fluid by, by just pushing it across like that, right? I'm just gonna see now, uh, emphasize the crag just a little bit more. There we are. And what I will do now is use, use the hairdryer, see if I can find my friend. It's good old Donald, the hairdryer. Yeah, it's... Uh... Here he is. He's, uh... Yeah, he's great, isn't he? <laughs> so um, I just, I just like to pull out a little bit of the, the sort of hairy edge there with a damp brush again. And when you were talking about that Rosemary and Co synthetic brush, what what was it called again, David? Uh, the, the the brush itself is is called. Um, a designer red dot. Designer red dot. Okay, thank you. Yeah. They're absolutely helps they're, um, they're they're really good. Though. They really are. Right. So um, I'm just going to put uh, whilst I'm uh, right. So I'll just try it a little bit more. I don't like to uh, use the hairdryer too much with granulations because it does spoil them, but I, I've managed to retain them there. Now, this might sound uh, weird, but uh, what I've done is dried it. Now I'm going to wet it. <laughs> um, now, did you dry it? Did you dry it thoroughly or did you just take a bit of the moisture off the top? Um, no, it's, um, it's pretty much dry. I, I wouldn't say absolutely thoroughly fantastically dried but okay. it's dry enough so the the reason for this is that i'm putting the, the water on again is that i am now going to work wet into wet 
with these trees on the right hand side of the picture. So uh, I'll use this. Uh, this is another red dot brush. This is a number, a number six, rigger. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put in the the further trees, the ones that are uh, in the distance, and they're going to be grayer. So I, I will um, I will be using again the mixture of. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to use Moon Glow, and I'm just going to put a touch of uh, Green Appetite Genuine into it. There's not really very much here. Now you can see it, it's it's still too wet. So what I will do is um, I'll work on the lower part of this. I'm work, working around this. Um, this is quinacridone gold I put in there earlier. I don't know whether I actually mentioned it, but it, it's rather nice to have something bright there to liven up the, uh, the focal point, which of course is this area here. So that's why I've, I've put uh, the, the quinacridone gold in. And just on the granulation um, medium that you were talking about, so do you add the granulation to your water, or do you somehow add it to your mixed paint? How do you how do you tend to add it? Oh, you you can do it in a, a number of ways. You can add it to your your water, but uh, if you drop it into the paint into wet paint, it causes all sorts of exciting uh, <laughs> things to happen. Uh, so yes, you can you can drop it into into your wet paint. Uh, I haven't got any here at the moment. Uh, I'm not in the studio, you see. I, I, I can't uh, uh, use the communications to get out there. So um, I have to work in, in, the, in the house. Um, so I haven't, I haven't got the granulation medium with me. That's fine, that's fine. Right, so I'm working, working up this um, moon glow and some uh, green appetite genuine. Uh, creating the effect of these these trees, and they're they're quite faint. And I'm just going to put one or two in here that are a bit further back than the the, the main ones. Right, so uh, now we can uh, I can work this crag in. This is uh, another uh, crag. This is um, a number eight um, pointed round red dot. And again, I'm going to use the um, mixture of cobalt blue and moon glow. Um, Louise has said, would Luna Blue, Daniel Smith Luna Blue, be a good alternative to the Moon Glow, would you think? Oh, yes, it's a very exciting uh, colour, the, uh, the Moon Glow, uh, the Luna uh, Blue, yeah. Um, yes, I use that a lot, but I, I sometimes uh, get concerned that I, I use some of these colours too much on demonstrations. <laughs> <laughs> you have to vary it a bit sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, it's a fantastic colour, by all means use it, yeah. I, I love streams like this. Last summer I was uh, down on Dartmoor and uh, I, I love Dartmoor. It, it's such a, a, an amazing place. I'd been up on the top of uh, Black, uh, Black Tour sketching. and it, It's a, uh, a, a crag that you can sketch from so many different angles. And then I climbed, I, I descended to the Oak, West Oakman River and the only place that I could get a, a view of the uh, the crag with uh, the cascade in the foreground. There's a cascade which I could just about see through the trees, but I had to get out 
all over the river past these trees to actually do the, the view. So I, I wriggled my way through the, uh, the branches, which some of which were absolutely rotten. And then I managed to swing out on a branch onto a, a pointed rock, not the most uh, comfortable place to sit on while you're sketching, but I, um, I got onto it and not only was it pointed, but there was a great tree trunk that uh, right across it. So I, I had to put one leg either side of it. And so I, I sketched in this incredibly difficult, excruciating <laughs> position and then all of a sudden, the wind really took off and this branch was lashing about like anything. And um, it was um, very difficult being a man in that situation with that. <laughs> <laughs> it brought eyes tears to the eyes. <laughs> the, the lengths you go to, David, to get that yeah. great view. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a terrific view. I, I really loved it. I mean, I, I got so much out of it. It was beautiful. Anyway, what I've done here is I've tried to create this sort of mysterious look of the crags coming through, some of them catching the light, others in shadow, and um, bringing it so it's pushing that one into the, the rear there. So now uh, what I'd like to do is to um, use the cobalt blue and some cadmium red on these rocks here. Catherine said, ha ha, guess I got to brush up my skills as a gymnast if I want to become a good... Oh, absolutely. Yes, it does help enormously. <laughs> <laughs> and Trina said, artists do anything necessary to get the sketch and painting. She said, Graham Booth stood in the river and painted those trees. I, I love this story, David. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sometimes the only place that you can see is, is in some places it's it's the only place where you can get the the view of the uh of what you want in the middle of the river or oh, a number of rivers i've gone through it's just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so i've dropped in some yellow ochre there uh, do do please um uh, give me the nudge if i if i've missed something because i get so excited about what i'm talking about that i I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> do you see what um, I mean? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, we've got a question from Adash in India, and um, they say, when you sketch outdoors, do you also keep track of what all the colours you see out there? Because I would imagine the colours probably change as, as the light changes. Well, the colours, yes, the colours change with seasons. They change the light and, and, and of course, with, with rain as well. Uh, and um, yes, uh, I take note of the colours. If I'm doing something locally, for example, uh, I, I don't, I, it's not so critical because I'm so familiar with the scene that it doesn't really matter. And sometimes I want to change it anyway. But if it's if it's very critical, then I'm, I'm ever so careful. I use um, watercolour sketching uh, a lot. I, I, I go out sketching in watercolour because... Um, I just I just love it, but uh, a lot of the monochrome work I do in pencil or charcoal or or whatever, then I will make notes, color notes on the uh, on the sketch itself in pencil. Right. I hope that uh, that answers the question. Yes. No, that was great. Thank you. So again, some um, cobalt blue. Just to put a bit of shadow in here. And now I want to dry this. So I can work on these trees now. Now we're, we're, we're sort of approaching the halfway mark, David. So I don't know whether okay. now is an appropriate time or whether you, you want a couple more minutes to uh, to finish something. Yeah, just uh, if you could give me a couple of minutes, that no would problem. be great. 
So this is um, green appetite genuine with a, a touch of uh, moon glow uh, there. Well, we've had a few questions coming in. So um, Louisa said, if you only had three or four brushes in your palette, what would they be? Ah, right. Uh, well, I'd have a, a mop, um, a large mop, um, a number, uh, a number six and a number ten sable, and a rigger. If I had four, four was it you said? Yeah, yeah, Th three or four. Yeah, that that's great. And um, Sandra's asked. Um, do you have a certain time of day that you like sketching best? Uh, well, I, when I go out sketching, I, I I tend to be doing it all the time when the when I see the subject, and usually um, morning is is ideal. But uh, sometimes uh, I just carry on and on and on. Uh, so when I'm in the studio. I always work in, in the mornings uh, because that's the my most productive, my most creative time. Uh, but when I'm out sketching, uh, you see, the, the thing is about sketching is that when you really get the inspiration, when you find that there's something really exciting out there, you can sketch whatever, even if you haven't eaten for 10 days and you, you, you're on your last legs. And um, you know things are, are not terribly good. You can still sketch because it 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 really inspires you. You go for it. I hope that's some sort of answer. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, Trina also asked, "What what size are you using today on the on the paper?" Well, the pa the paper is um, a bit smaller today than I was using because because I'm having to work quite quickly. I've got a, a quarter imperial. It's about uh, 11 inches by um, 10 inches, something like that. Yes, OK. And Amelia said, it must be nice to spend time painting in such peaceful places. And that's the only places you do paint, isn't it, really, David? In lovely, uh, peaceful places. Well, I try to, but sometimes I, I manage to get into some not so peaceful places. <laughs> um uh, you know, sometimes I've, I've been out with the army at, at times and uh, sort of sketching night night battles. And that's anything but peaceful. Oh, yes. night battles. Flashes going off and you know, <laughs> voices, grenades and, and smoke. <laughs> uh, that's hardly peaceful. So <laughs> I have to say it's all the time. <laughs> They're quite interesting, especially in the dead of night, you know, and, and uh, you get the, the tracer going from the machine guns and um, that, that can be, you know, quite, quite interesting to sketch. Anyway, I better stop there and... and um, that's so brilliant. Then... Let's have a little have a little break. So that's that's uh, fantastic. How are you getting on? It's really evolving and I love the way David, even with just a few brush strokes right at the start, he, he encapsulates the light coming through in the sky so tremendously well. It's, it's almost one of your signature things that, David. It's really you know, the way that you use light in the sky. It's fantastic. Um, if, if you're watching on a recording of this on YouTube, we'd really appreciate it if you could give us a thumbs up um, on the, and press the button. Uh, YouTube then recommends the class to more people and it then helps us spread the benefits of creativity to a wider audience, uh, which is our, our mission, really. Um, as I covered at the start, this one hour class is a prelude to David's full two to three hour workshop webinar. In our workshops, we have a lot more time and you can speak directly to the artist for guidance, should you wish. And you also get a written critique of your art after the event as well. So it's a full package to help you develop your skills as an artist and have fun. Um, it's also really great value when you consider the amount of time that the artist provides. Uh, so David's workshop is going to be taking place next week on Thursday the 13th of May and it will be at uh, half past three in the afternoon UK time. So David, what are you uh, planning next week? I think it's building on 
this flowing water theme um, with a really lovely scene in the Brecon Beacons. And by the way, the Brecon Beacons is a national park in, in Wales. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what you plan to do there. Yes, uh, it, it's uh, a waterfall, a small waterfall. I mean, there are, Brecon Beacons has an amazing amount of, of waterfalls there of all sizes and shapes. And uh, it's a fantastic place if you love water. Uh, and um, what I'm going to be doing is, is uh, a, a smaller waterfall with uh, crags, rocks, trees, and a, a dark pool. Uh, so there's going to be quite a, a lot of different features uh, in, in the in the painting. And uh, so it's um, <clears throat> what I want to do is also create a sense of space and distance uh, behind the waterfall, uh, going up to the uh, sort of the at the mountains and hills in the background. Uh, so I'm bringing in color as well, um, trying to bring in um, a lot of warm colors as, as well as uh, you know, changing it a little bit, trying to improve what's there um, and, and making it a little bit more interesting. Sounds, sounds lovely. And obviously in these shorter classes, you can't really go through things step by step. So in, in the two to three hours, we have a lot more time to investigate things, go off on slight tangents as well, um, so that you can really have a, a, a full session, which is really, really great. Um, so let me show you um, how you can go and book Davis. I'll show you the reference pictures and everything. It's on our, our website. Um, let me show you how you do that. Um, and... Uh, you visit our website, shopkeeprt.com, and then you click on live events at the top. And then when you scroll down, these are all our upcoming live events, and you'll see David's workshop, which is coming up there next week. Click on the workshop button. Um, and then this is the page where it shows you all the information about what he's going to be covering. There's the reference photo, and it is uh, incredible. I'd I urge you to go and have a look at that. It's going to be a really nice... Uh, piece. Um, list the uh, recommended materials. We've got a deal with um, Jackson's Art as well, so you can get a 10% discount if you're a new, new account there. Um, and then if you're interested, you click this link, which will take you through to David's shop. And here you can see the ticket for to join his live webinar. And if you then add that to cart, It'll add it to your basket there and then if you go back and then you can if you want to purchase the video recording as well um, there's two prices so the full video if you haven't attended the live webinar but if you have attended you get a huge discount and so you can add that and so if we now go to the checkout you'll see that the price there to join that um, three-hour workshop is about 56 pounds uh, if you have purchased the video we'll then unlock it for you you can then visit our purchased videos um, library which has got all the different videos and recordings that you can watch you'll be able to find David's on there um, if you haven't purchased it you can purchase it with that button and if you have you just press the watch and it will launch and you can play it on any device um, as many times as you want in the future so hopefully that helps brilliant so let's get back for the second half and we'll rejoin David right thank you John um... We'll um, get back into this. Uh, so long as I don't put this um, brush into my tea, I'll be okay. <laughs> right. So some uh, green appetite, genuine, and moon glow again. And now I'm making these a uh, lot stronger on the this side. Um, so trying to create this. This sense of, of depth in the uh, in in the background. Uh, this this brush comes to a, a, a lovely point, um, and um, this is, again is the uh, red dot rigger. And then I lose the strength of it down there because I've got this tree coming up here. I don't want the, there to be a clash between the, the, the darker areas and this this tree. So you lose the, um, the effect there. And that one won't be quite so strong. So 
So with water, I'm just softening this off. So we've had a couple of questions about the workshop. Um, would it be advisable to pre-sketch out the outline or will you be doing that with them in the workshop? I'll be doing that with, with you in the workshop. Um, but if you want to, I mean, by all means, uh, you know, if you feel a, a, a bit happier having it already done, then, then that's fine. There's no problem. Yeah, great. Hazel's asked, with this uh, picture that you're doing now, which direction is the light coming from? Um, well, the, the light will be coming from slightly from the, the right hand side. Although it, it looks as though it's light there, it's um, it, it's amazing how when it's coming through cloud, it can look as though it's coming from, you know, one or two different directions. <laughs> uh, light is is quite interesting. I, I had a, a group of painters lo locally working on a, a, a building, and um, the light was coming from the south, uh, the left hand side. And uh, we were sketching away there, and then all of a sudden I looked up, and the subject and the light was certainly shining from the right hand side. That's from the north. Well, as you know, the sun doesn't normally shine from the north in the uh, northern hemisphere. <laughs> uh, and uh, I pointed this out to the, the group uh, and um, pointed out that uh, a huge, a massive white cloud had come over the northern side of the, the, the building, to the north of the building, and that had acted like a, a giant reflector so that the sun wasn't actually on the building at the time, but it was on the cloud and it was bouncing it back into the, uh, in, into the scene in that way. And it was absolutely fascinating to see this change. So I, I took photographs of it uh, in, in both states and. And it, it actually went back to the south again then. <laughs> Interesting. So you can, if you want to, you can always say, well, that was a cloud bounce that caused that. I know it's it's uh, <laughs> coming from the north and it shouldn't, but that's why, it, that, why I do it in, in the painting. So you can get away with it like that. If, if sometimes, you know, you don't quite get it right. And, well, I don't sometimes. And uh, so it, it's good to have an excuse like that. <laughs> yes. So right now I'm going to use some, um, what am I going to use now? Some French ultramarine and burnt umber now. And we've got a few questions from Lynn Claydon. So Lynn said, um, what do you use lavender for? And is it possible to use watered down purple instead? Or doesn't it work as well? Well, yes, you can, um, you can often, um, usually get uh, the same effect with with different colors sometimes with, with many of these these colors and it's just a question of uh, which one you choose lavender is a really exciting color for skies i find and it it's got um, a rather pleasing and very gentle granulation uh, which um, works really well uh, and i i love it i love the color at all but i, I generally just use it for skies sometimes in, in seas, in, in water. And that, that's, that's mainly what I use it for. But you, you can, of course, use, use violet or, or, or purple, uh, watered down a little bit, and that, that'll work equally well. Great. And she's also made a comment about um, your books. I think she's a, I think we've got a, a, a super fan here, David, because she says she's got all the other books from David's website, but can't get the mountain landscape one. Is he bringing a new one out with Daniel Smith paint suggestions by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> um, There's another well, idea, another idea for another book. <laughs> Yes, I'm not short of ideas. I must admit, this is <laughs> of them. Uh, I haven't. Um, I mean, I'm not working on a how to paint book at the moment, so uh, I haven't uh, got anything in the pipeline. I'm afraid with Daniel Smith. Well, I, you know, the the book I'm working on is actually I am using Daniel Smith colors in it, but it's not a how to paint book. I've dropped in yellow ochre there, um, but yes, I I, I guess uh, at, at some stage there will be something of the nature that. Uh, 
that Lynn was talking about. But I, I, I haven't got the time at the moment to get into it. <laughs> and can you say anything about this new book that you're working? Are we, have we got an industry first? Have we got a scoop? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it's uh, it's a book on the Middle East. Um, in, oh. um, it, it's not a, uh, a how to paint book. It's, it's about my, my sort of travels there over the years. And, oh, right. uh, the excitement... Uh, I've had it there, and um, that will be out in about twelve months' time. Okay. Yeah. That's a, is that a is that a little bit of a departure from your normal normal? Public? Well, not really, because um, I did the book on the Arctic um, a few years ago, so it's similar to that, really. Okay. I I do, I do love doing these these books on um, various parts of the the wild countryside. And and much of the Middle East is, is that I'm doing is is sort of on uh, in wild areas. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a time check here, David, because we've been having lots of fun, but the time is sort of running away with us. <laughs> um, and I would say you've probably got about seven minutes or so. As about, so so I don't know whether you want to maybe focus on a particular area or I, I don't know anyway that's up to you but just just gave you a bit of a time check though yeah, you can see i'm desperately slow <laughs> <laughs> no it's lovely and i i don't want to i just got you know we, we have uh we have another uh workshop coming up very shortly as well so it's all right uh, yeah no i shall uh i shall put the um the accelerator on <laughs> Do you get, is, get really absorbed? Do you, as you're painting these scenes, do you, in your mind, you almost imagine that you're standing there, yes. painting it in plein air? Yeah, up to my thighs in water, painting <laughs> and working away. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I do. I, I I imagine myself back in these places, and that's that's one of the exciting things about watercolor, especially when you travel a lot. You uh, you find that. Uh, it, it takes you back to these these wonderful places. Uh, so, right now, I'm I'm just dropping in some yellow ochre. Into the um, into the rocks, and I'll put some some stronger color on in a moment. Uh, that almost went into my teeth. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you've drunk a number of hot paint <laughs> mixes in the, in the past. The worst thing, though, is when you put your brush heavily loaded with paint into somebody else's tea. <laughs> that, that really is horrible. And I've done that a few times with students, unfortunately, in the excitement of the moment. <sighs> so that makes that stand out a little bit more. And uh, again, I'm using ultramarine and uh, burnt amber. And uh, now the I'm making the tones a lot stronger, so it brings it forward. Now here's here's a question we've not had before from Diane. So she said, "Just curious, if you listen to music while you paint these serene scenes, what do you listen to?" Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you do you listen to music at, at all when you paint, David, or I is it? Sometimes. Yes, I do. Yes. Um, I mean, if it's a stormy scene, uh, Beethoven's Fifth is always a, a good one. Uh, um, uh, I, um, yeah, the, I, 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 I love, um, I love a bit of uh, robust music. Um, but um, yeah, I, I do like to um, listen to mainly classical music while I'm painting or Pavarotti perhaps. Yeah, quite powerful then. Powerful. Yeah. So right, I'm I'm just um, putting in these rocks again using French ultramarine and burnt umber, using a, a small number four brush. Victoria says there's a lovely scene in Toad of Toad Hall where when Mole puts his paintbrush in his tea. David just reminded me of that. <laughs> 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 oh, wind in the willows! Yes, I'm looking forward to 
reading that to my granddaughter. Oh, yes. And there's nothing quite like it. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that episode, though. I, I must have, have a look out to see what... Yeah, I'll have to look for that. Yeah. It's funny, these these older, when you reminisce with these, I guess, children's shows uh, today, but they're not quite as fast paced as kids want these days. <laughs> oh, really? You yeah. have these memories of them being really brilliant and you sit down with them and they kind of lose interest because, uh, you know, the pace of life is just so much quicker. It's, it's a shame, really. I suppose, yes, I suppose you're right. But what you've got to do in that situation, really, is to make it more exciting for them. When the way you, you impart the scene, you know, and the, the noises and the, uh, the outrageous toad how he was um sort of really making making the most awful noises when he was in such distress the poor fellow yeah and th that that's what i love about it I, I think in some ways you can you can overcome that what you're just talking about by just doing doing things like that uh right i'm, I'm really sort of uh, trying to i need a bigger brush now trying to make these uh these strong contrasts between the uh dark wet rocks and the falling light water and also the strong contrast between the the soft water and the hard rocks and um what i will do now is try and drop in some cadmium red it's always good to have a, a little bit of something dropped in there and um there we are and this other rock coming down here working around that tree i will be showing different ways of creating these uh, these trees uh, next week and um, that'll be a, a, a different way of um, of working which you'll probably find quite interesting um, so again just dropping in the colors there a bit more red cadmium red and then some cobalt blue for the water And then some burnt umber and French ultramarine in the foreground. Now, I, I can't really finish this off as I'd like to in the given time. But, I, I uh, knew it was going to be fairly difficult in this time, but I, I mean, it's it's looking stunning, David. And it's maybe maybe you could finish it off a little bit uh, afterwards and send it to us. And we can add to our blog or something and we can put it on our okay. Facebook page yeah. that'd, be, that'd be fine um no it's it's looking i guess you've now got to get into the sort of the detail of the water a little bit don't you and and try yeah and... yeah and the uh and the and the rocks as well yeah it's um it's just just creating a little bit of an, an effect there with 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 the rocks as you see I, i've kept the um this side softer and the top side uh, where the rocks uh, really out of the water I've kept that uh, hard but if you want to you see what what I do is uh, I'll get a a flat brush and soften it off a little bit at the bottom as well that, that's another way of, of working working it so that the rocks look as though they're they're actually sticking out of the water now, now, before um, I do the, the sum up at the end, would you mind holding your painting up closer to the camera so that we can see a little bit more of the, the detail? Uh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> that's great. But um, there's a lot of uh, rocky detail to go in here and a bit yeah. more 
uh, on the the trees there as well. Uh, but and I haven't uh, touched the, this uh, bush yet. No. I know there's always a lot. And this is why <laughs> this is why the, the two to three hour workshop is a much better time frame in order to do. And then we can oh, yeah. go off on these departures as well. And you can have that complete. And there's no sort of time limit in a way. We do it until it's totally finished and everybody's happy. So yeah. please do. If you are interested, uh, I'd highly recommend it. Um, so there you have it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we've created a Facebook post uh, relating to this little class. And if when you've finished and you're ready, take a photo of your painting, post it up there, share it up there. Um, we have a really great community thing going on where people and if you have a look at what everybody else has done, give them a little thumbs up, make some comments. Uh, it's a really nice uh, thing just to, to have a look. And we feature uh, the person who's got the most number of likes at the end of the week. We feature in our Saturday morning RT Roundup email from all our classes. So um, it's, it's nice to just have a little browse as well. Um, if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass to David, now is your chance to write that down. So please do that in the Q&A. So the end of another great arty special. I've got a few comments that I'll just read through to David now. Louise says, as enjoyable as always. Thank you, David. Lots to practice before next Thursday. Uh, see you soon, John. Uh, Trina said, David, this has been an absolutely fascinating class this morning. I'm looking forward to your workshop next week. I appreciate your stories and your generous spirit. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, Louise from Israel said, hello. Uh, thank you. Hazel, wonderful. Thank you. Andrew, many thanks, David. Looking forward to the workshop. Kim, stunning painting. Thank you, David. What a lovely man, she said. Um, <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> Catherine said, thank you, David. Awesome lesson and lots of fun commentary. Uh, Lucia, thank you. Great class. Claire, thank you very much indeed. I just love David's teaching style and, of course, the wonderful painting, which is always inspiring. Eva, thank you, David, as usual, an entertaining hour. Susie, another fabulous painting, David. Thanks for sharing your masterful knowledge. Uh, Lisa Jane, Thank you so much, David. I've always loved your work. Um, uh, Sue, stunning. I haven't picked up a brush. I just wanted to watch every stroke. Um, Doris, thank you very much. Very enjoyable. Bobby, thanks so much. Lovely scene and have enjoyed the foray into the wilderness. Uh, Adash, Thanks a lot, David. Love your work. Lynn, thanks so much. Kathy, thank you. Great painting. Louise, fantastic. David, as always, I've taken a lot of courses with you. Um, that's Louise in Israel. Um, Sally, lovely painting. Great fun. Look forward to trying. Thank you, David. Diane, uh, such a nice demo, David. I love the loose sky with the contrast of the detail of the rocks, trees and waterfall. Um, Sandra, thank you. See you next week. Christina, thanks. Wonderful class. Too short like i'd like to continue with you and hear more about your skills well you can do that christina join us next week uh, when we'll, we'll have a lot more time and be able to explore everything so if uh you've looked on to the two to three hour workshop webinar um, with liz chatterton to create, create a row of dynamic sparrows in pen and wash i'll see you there in about 30 minutes. Uh, if not, I hope you'll join me next Tuesday for a free arty class when we'll be travelling to the Philippines to rejoin Iris Babao Ui for a floral uh, watercolour class. Uh, please note that due to her time zone, uh, this will be at the revised time at nine o'clock in the morning UK time which I think might be quite difficult for those of you in the US. But if you can make it, you'll get a big gold star. So until uh, next time, it's goodbye from me. Uh, but obviously, thank you so much for your time and generosity to David. Thank you, David. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. And uh, best of luck with your painting. <laughs> yes, really do uh, share if you get the opportunity. It'd be great. And a big round of applause for you, David. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and obviously we'll finish on your painting. Oh, it always looks good with a frame, doesn't it? With a mount. Brilliant. Bye, everyone. Bye.